Alex Nater commented, can you review a Tinco vacuum, please? Well, because you said please, Alex, of course I can. Here is one. Tinco, Tineco, however you pronounce it. I'm going to pronounce this brand that I haven't really heard of as Tinco because that is how the manufacturers themselves pronounce it. On their videos, you say potato, I say potato. I'm saying Tinco. Okay, let's unbox this Tinco cordless cleaner. Because I have a YouTube channel reviewing mainly floor care products, I do get a lot of requests from manufacturers asking me to review their machines. Now, most of these are from companies I've never heard of. And to be quite honest, I don't tend to take them up on their offer. This one hasn't been provided either by the Tinco company. I saw this on Amazon on offer. It was 199 and then it had a 30 pounds coupon to reduce it to 169 and then also had a 50 pound voucher. So I paid 119 pounds for this A10 Hero. Now, as I said, they're quite a new brand to the UK. I believe their parent company is Ecovax and they make several robotic machines, but they seem to be expanding. And uh, I thought, well, let's get in on the ground floor and have a look at this A10 Hero, which looks very similar to the Dyson V7 or V8. Whether it performs as well as the Dyson, I don't know. Okay. Tinko, Tinko. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that wrong all through the video. Live easy, enjoy life, it says. And what can be more enjoyable than vacuuming? A lot of people will be saying a lot of things. Anyway, I like vacuuming. I'm a, a bit weird that way. But anyway, who cares? So we have a quick start guide. Nice sort of colour. Just basically showing you how to charge it and how to attach the uh, cleaning tools. And another little more detailed instruction. And a little service card. I've always been a bit nervous about buying cleaner brands I don't know because of the after sale service. But I've been on uh, Tinco's website. They have a UK website and there are numbers you can ring and contact details. So I thought I'd give it a chance. Anyway, I bought this from Amazon. So Amazon are normally pretty good accepting returns, aren't they, if anything goes wrong. So I'll look at that at my leisure. This is just an unboxing and first look. I think it will need a full charge before I do a full demo, which I will be doing. Here's the wand. You know, quite a fetching satin blue, I'd call that. I think it's metal, I can't say. It feels cold to the touch. I can't see if it's aluminium. I think it is. Don't quote me on it, but I think it's an aluminium wand. So it is pretty strong and light. So there's that. It's all very well packaged. I'm glad to see they're using cardboard and not a lot of polystyrene packaging. It's a little bit more environmentally friendly. So in this box, I'm assuming, according to the picture, we have the vacuum itself. And it's also in a, a nice little fabric bag. Nice little touch there. You could use that, I suppose, to put some attachments, but I think this little docking station will hold a lot of them. So yes, very similar sort of design, isn't it, to many, many cordless cleaners. A lot of manufacturers have taken a few design hints from Dyson, I have to say. The plastic on this, you know, I've felt a lot of plastic in my time <laughs> reviewing vacuums and it, yeah, it does have a slightly plasticky feel about it. But you know, it's sturdy enough, I suppose. So judging by this, we've got uh, all the components you'd expect. We've got an exhaust filter here that uh, I assume is washable. So that's your final filter. You'll need to clean that from time to time. It just says, please clean the filter periodically. It doesn't give you a time frame. Now, what I like about this, two things I like about this, that Dyson refuse to do despite customer complaints. This has two things that Dyson doesn't. 
It has a removable battery, so you can charge the battery like this on your worktop or charge it in the machine. But it also gives you the, the advantage if, if you want to buy a spare battery. And at the time of making this video, you can buy spare batteries from Amazon. Now, they're just about £55, I think. So if you want two batteries, you can have one fully charged while you're using the other. And if obviously it goes flat when you're using it, you just slot in the charged one and then start charging the flat one. So I like that. There are indicators on the battery as well that will show you the state of charge. So that's good. I like a removable battery on a cordless cleaner. Another bugbear, I've also found this with my Dysons. After a while, your finger can get a bit sore. If you've got any dexterity problems, if you've got arthritis in your fingers, you might find that keeping your finger on the trigger can be quite painful. But with this machine, you can use it like that with the trigger. I don't know if there's any charge in this. Yes, there is a little bit. So you can use it like that, but you can lock on the power button. There's a little lever here, look. You can press that lever. and the button is pressed down continuously for you. I like that feature. As far as other features goes, it's got two speed settings, basically the regular setting you've just heard. It's also got a max button at the top. That'll give you a bit of extra suction power for stubborn dirt. Here's your bin, your clear bin. To empty it, you've got a little lever. I think I need to remove this first though, a little sticker that is telling us, please do not use the product without the pre-filter in place. So the pre-filter is here. So to empty, press that button. And also you can give this a thorough clean. To get at the filter, it's underneath here. You can just pull that out without having to open the bin and you can clean that filter. Now this comes with a special tool to help you clean the filter, which I'm assuming means it will come with a spare filter as well. Another feature I like to see on the cordless cleaner, a spare filter. So that fits in there. To give this a bit more of a thorough clean, if you want to periodically, there is a little lever at the back. You can press that down and the whole bin comes off, so that's good. You can't uh, submerse this bin. Don't put this bin in water you can, of course, wipe around. This comes off, so that can be given a more thorough clean. There's the central shroud. And you can wipe around the inside of this bin, but don't submerge the bin in water because it contains current carrying conductors that power the motorized tools that come with this machine. But it's, it comes apart very easily. I've just done that without looking at the instructions. Pretty straightforward. And then that goes back on there. So there we go. So that's the cleaner itself. Now, under here, we have some of the small tools. So you get the crevice tool for your nooks and crannies. This is a combined sort of upholstery and dusting brush. very like a shark one. So that's qu they're quite nice soft brushes, not ultra soft, but they're pretty soft. Okay, if you're dusting your work tops, shelving, that sort of thing, you can press this button here, release the brush, and then you've got this upholstery nozzle with litter pickers to help deal with pet hair. And it's a nice full-sized nozzle, that, I quite like that. And of course, that just pushes on. It doesn't actually have a click fitting just pushes on like that the small tool so that's okay for doing your upholstery we also have a motorized tool which at this price point so if you're paying full price it's around 200 pounds which puts it in line with a Dyson V6 a basic V6 but a V6 the basic V6 doesn't have the small motorized tool so we've got this fairly soft brushes so it'd be more delicate on your upholstery, but for your stair carpeting, I prefer sort of stiffer nylon brushes. They're okay. We'll see how it performs when I do a video. It's got an articulated face there, so you can move it up and down. And 
I'm not sure if we can take it apart for cleaning. It doesn't look like it. I'll check when I do the next video. But there's no sort of button or anything to easily remove that. So that's something I need to look into. And of course, this will fit directly onto the handle. You can also fit this onto the end of the wand as well. Okay. This is the charger. Obviously, it's the UK version, so it has a UK three pin plug. If you're watching this in other countries, you'll be supplied the appropriate charger to fit your socket outlet. So just undo this. So this doesn't have to be wall mounted. In fact, it doesn't come with a wall mounting bracket. It comes with a floor standing storage base, which I'll show you in a minute. It's quite a nice long cable on this. That's certainly, oh, I'd say that's over a meter in length. Some of the cables on these chargers are pretty stingy, but that's, that's a good length of charger. Always use the supplied charger to charge up your battery. And to charge this machine, there's the little port there. So you can plug it there. That machine can go in its special charging base or on your worktop, or as I said earlier, you can charge the battery like this while your machine's stored away in a cupboard. So I will be charging this. I think you need to charge it for three to four hours before it's fully charged before your first use. So don't try and use it. I've noticed there's hardly, hardly any charge. It's just showing one blue light there. So it does need plugging in. Now this is quite intriguing and something I've not seen before is a special filter cleaning tool containing a spare filter. So basically, you do have to rotate this. Now, I know Tinco are introducing a new model. It's not available in the UK yet that has a cleaning tool like this, but it's motorized, so it turns it for you. With this cheaper version, you basically have to turn this manually. And I can hear, and I don't know if you can quite see, there is a little brush. So that helps to brush the debris off the dirty filter. But of course, to use this, you put it on the machine. So you can turn the cleaner on. If you want to give the filter a thorough clean, you can put it on max. And obviously you can lock it into the on position while you turn this. So the suction will help to remove any debris off the filter. So that's a handy little thing. And the filter should just come out. So oh, there we go. There's a little door there and that's your spare filter. That is a very good idea to have the spare filter and also to have this cleaning tool. How effective it is, I'm not sure. We'll have to see when I get the filter dirty after a demo. So underneath here, this is the little charging base that can store the machine and all the accessories. It does feel quite robust. Tinko call this a storehouse. So basically this fits on the floor, preferably next to your socket so you can charge the machine. It doesn't dock and charge, you still have to plug the charger into the port on the battery. But the machine itself, I believe, will sit inside here. But also, under here is space for a spare battery. Some models may come with two. And if I was to buy a spare battery, this is where it would live. It would fit into the storehouse there. And as you can see, it allows access to charge it. So you can charge it like that. And actually store the machine in the storehouse like that while the battery is charging. The final accessory to get out of the box is the main carpet and floor nozzle. Just check that there's nothing under here. I think I've got everything out. Yes. So this is a dual purpose. Again, there are other models in the Tinko range that come with different heads. You can get a fluffy head, Dyson-esque fluffy type head for your hard floors. And I believe you can 
buy it as an optional extra. There's also a set of optional tools you can buy for this, which includes a flexible hose and a long crevice tool, etc. That's also available on Amazon. I might buy that for this machine, depending on how well I like it after I've used it. But um, for the time being, I'll stick with the supplied tools. So this, again, taking a few hints from other manufacturers, it has two sets of brushes. It has soft, I don't know if they're carbon fiber, but there's definitely a softer brush here. Gray soft brush. And then, oh, that is odd. There are three, is it one, two? It's hard, it's hard to count them. It might just be one of each. No, no, there's definitely two. There seems to be two rows of the softer brushes in this sort of chevron design, V shape, and only one, or is there two of those? No, I think there's only one of the stiffer brushes. So mm, it might be all right on hard floors, but I'm not really sure how well this is gonna do on pet hairs. They're very short brushes. I think the Dyson ones are slightly stiffer. I'll be testing this on pet hair on carpet to see how well it fares, but also, of course, on hard floors. I think it'll do well on hard floors. You've also got this velour strip that helps to seal the nozzle. Two wheels at the front. There is a little lock here that you can undo to gain access. I'm assuming this brush does slide out because there is an access slot there for you to take it out, which is good. You need to be able to remove the brush from time to time to give it a clean, especially if you have pets. The wattage of this particular nozzle is 40 watts. It's got uh, two nice rubber coated wheels on this and they're very, very quiet and smooth running. To be honest, this nozzle does feel pretty good quality. Comparing it to say the nozzle I've got with my Dyson V10, the main carpet and floor nozzle, that seems pretty creaky and flimsy compared to this. This also has something that Dyson haven't added to any of their cleaners yet. Has one, two, three, four, five little LED lights to help illuminate dark corners when you're cleaning under furniture to help you find the dirt and also to help you prevent picking up anything you don't want to pick up. Now, this is a bugbear with certain nozzles of this type. I know it's happened on shark cleaners. I know it's happened on vax cleaners and probably on other machines. Comment below if it's happened on yours. If you've got a nozzle like this on any vacuum that's got this little internal hose, often the hoses can split and it often means scrapping the whole nozzle and just getting a new nozzle, which is very wasteful. This does feel pretty strong, this hose, but whether it lasts, I don't know, but that, compared to some, does seem to have some strength about it. One last thing to show you that's also included in the box is this little cleaning tool. You've got a soft brush on one side that helps you to brush dust off the shroud or inside the dirt bin. And on the other side, you've got a safety blade that helps you to remove hairs or threads and fibers that get trapped around the rotating nozzle. You can just cut through the hair and pick them off that way. So that's another useful little extra you get with this Tinco model. A full demo of this cleaner will follow on my channel so please subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified when that video has been uploaded. I'm going to show you this working very briefly at the end of this video. I need to of course fully charge it first and then once I've used this around my home for a few weeks I'll be better placed to give you my impressions, all the pros and cons I found with this vacuum cleaner. So this is going on charge and we'll set up a little demonstration and then that will be the end of today's video. Okay, the vacuum is fully charged. I put down a little bit of dirt on this rug just to give it a brief demonstration to end this video. So just a few differently sized particles. I've got some loose leaf tea, some lentils, some rice, and some rolled oats. So I'm going to pass the cleaner head forward and back through the middle on its normal power setting. So there you go, that's not a bad result at all, going forward and back on the normal setting. I wasn't going too quickly 
and I don't think I was going too slow either. Obviously, this is just surface dirt. Most vacuum cleaners should cope with this. Now, there are a few bits of the loose leaf tea left. You can see a few of the black particles there. And there is a bit of a groove in this textured rug. And there are some of the smaller particles still in the rug. I'm going to go over again, but this time on the turbo mode. Okay. So another couple of passes and it's dealt with some more of the dirt. It's even got out all the dirt that was in these grooves. There is a tiny piece of loose leaf tea there. Odd little particles, but that's not bad at all for a cordless vacuum. So as you can see, all the dirt has been collected in the waste bin. We've still got a little way to go before it reaches the max fill line here. Just a quick test of the suction alone now. I'm going to see if I can clear up this pile of dirt that I've just emptied using the suction alone on the normal power setting. Okay then, we'll do a quick demo on the kitchen floor. Obviously this is a lot of dirt, so I wouldn't expect your home to be this filthy. But if it's going to pick up anything near this sort of dirt, then it should be fine with the average dirt in the average home. Okay, again it's just going to be on its regular power setting. And again, similar sized particles to the carpet demonstration. But this time I've added a few Fruit Loop type cereals, but I think they're going to be too big. I think the nozzle will actually snowplow those, but we'll have a go. Well, <laughs> much as I predicted, it's not really picked up any of the cereal. I didn't really expect it to. But what it has picked up, it has made a pretty clean sweep forward and back. It's picked up everything else. It's picked up the loose leaf tea, the rolled oats and the lentils. So that's pretty good performance. Well, that's about the end of today's video. One final thing to have a quick look at is the state of the filters. Now, obviously these few little demonstrations I've done today are rather extreme and they don't really represent day-to-day -day use. That's why I'll be making a follow-up video after I've used this machine around my house for a couple of weeks. I'm going to see how well it copes with just general day-to-day -day use and see how long the battery lasts, etc. So, first of all, looking at the exhaust filter, that is still pretty clean. I can't see any speck of dirt. So all the dirt that's been picked up has actually remained either in the bin or on the pre-motor filter. So that's the post-motor. But what does the pre-motor filter look like? Well, a little bit of dust, fine dust has dropped down. And as you can see, there is a little bit of dust on there. Obviously after day-to-day -day use, after a couple of weeks or so, that will become a lot dustier. Well finally then, I'm going to test the filter cleaning tool that you also get included with this vacuum. So here's the tool complete with a new clean filter inside. So we'll just take out the clean filter. So in normal use, obviously after emptying the bin, if your filter was very dirty, you can just pop in your clean one. So, again, this isn't filthy dirty, but compared 
to the brand new filter you can just about see a difference there so we'll pop the used filter inside here close the little hatch and I'm going to actually put it on maximum while I'm turning this dial to help clean this filter. Obviously, before you start to clean the dirty filter, you must ensure that the clean filter is located in the bottom of the bin, which I did do, of course. Let's have a look now at the cleaned filter. That hasn't done a bad job at all. It's even got the dust from around the bottom seal and most of the dust from around the top. If I'd spent a little bit more time probably would have cleaned more of that. I do like this feature on this uh, vacuum cleaner. It's very different. I've never ever seen this type of filter cleaning system before on any other cordless machine. So it's a big thumbs up for me. Well, that's about the end of my unboxing, first look and brief demo of this Tinco A10 Hero vacuum cleaner. So far, I'm pretty impressed with it, but uh, I'll reserve my full judgment until I've used this around my home for a couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you're convinced by this video, there is a couple of Amazon affiliated links below if you want to try one out for yourself. If you have anything you'd like to see or if you've got anything you'd like to ask me, please ask below. And as I said, if you want me to demonstrate a particular aspect of this cleaner, comment below and I'll try to include it in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.